a science experiment on groups of boys from competing camps who have no idea they're being manipulated into fighting each other. What was all that about? In the summer of 1954, a school bus with a group of 11 and 12 year old boys arrived at Robbers Cave State Park in Oklahoma. What the kids didn't know, there was another bus. All the boys thought they were going camping. Their parents at home believed the sponsored trip had something to do with leadership. None of them knew that the camp staff were actually researchers and the boys part of a controversial experiment. One of its goals, let the boys fight each other. The Robbers Cave experiment was designed to unfold in three stages, in-group formation, friction and conflict resolution. It started with in-group formation. In the first week, each group did various activities without interacting with another. The boys had fun, went swimming and did hikes. Over time, social norms developed. Leaders and followers emerged. The boys formed friendships and started inventing their own subculture. Eventually, they came up with names. One group called themselves the Eagles, and the others chose to be the Rattlers. They stenciled their names onto shirts and flags. The Ing groups were formed. The tribes had an identity. They were now ready to meet each other. During the friction phase, the two groups came into contact with each other. The researchers set up competitions with single prizes for the winners. In other words, they established a limited resource for the two to battle over. It didn't take long before the in-groups developed negative attitudes towards the out-group. Prejudice became apparent. To make matters worse, the staff suggested to one group to dump buckets of mud inside the cabin of the others. Eventually, the kids grew hateful, violent and verbally abusive. They burned each other's flags, and sometimes things escalated to the point that the camp staff had to step in. Last was conflict resolution. The boys were meant to make peace. First, the staff tried to reduce the prejudice between the groups by increasing contact and communication, but that just made matters worse. Then, the researchers blocked the valve to the camp's water tank. As there was no more drinking water, the boys became progressively thirstier. Then the camp staff suggested that they all needed to collaborate to fix the problem. Reluctantly, the group started to get to work. Before long, the boys were mixing and cooperating. There were no rattlers or eagles anymore, only a bunch of campers collaborating. When the water finally came through, there was common rejoicing. The researchers learned four key things from the experiment. First, individual differences are not responsible for tribal conflicts. Age, race, culture or religion don't seem to matter. Second, hostile attitudes arise when groups compete for resources that only one of them can get. Third, discussions don't solve conflicts. Fourth, only a common goal or enemy that promotes cooperation reduces the friction. Two renowned psychologists, Musafa Sharif and his wife Carolyn Wood Sharif, were behind the controversial experiment and later established a theory. Realistic conflict theory explains how hostility arises as a result of competition for limited resources, such as money, power, military protection or social status. Whether these resources are actually limited or just perceived to be so doesn't matter. Their work helps us understand the mechanisms of discrimination against outsiders, which escalates during shortages. For example, when in-groups think that good jobs are hard to find, they often try to remove sources of out-group competition, lobby for legal restrictions, or deny newcomers access. What do you think? 
Do tribal conflicts only arise as a result of competition for scarce goods? And if so, are shared goals and common enemies really the only way to peace? Or is the theory flawed and not applicable to adults? After all, children are easier to influence, not only to build a prejudice, but also to change their ideas again later. Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you like how we explain complicated ideas in simple cartoon animation, you can support us. Visit patreon.com slash sprouts. Just visit us, learn how it works and what's in it for you. We hope to see you there. And if you are a parent or educator, check out our website, sproutschools.com. There you can find this and other video lessons additional resources and classroom activities.